Hey guys, this is an urgent video from your pontiff, the pontiff. This is an urgent, urgent video from your pontiff. And this concerns the uh, Bark and Jack video about the fact that the Rolex, Rolex bubble has burst. And I gotta be honest with you, it's, uh, it's, it's it's a it's a concern. It's a concern. The mere fact that uh, Bark and Jack is making videos. It's the hottest thing on YouTube. We've got Bark and Jack. Uh, the Rolex bubble has finally burst. Waste weight listed. He's he's talking about waste weight. What's he saying here? Fucking hell! Turn this stuff. He's talking about. Weight listed watches in windows. Okay, that's Bark and Jack's uh, headline there. We've got Clivers has gone crazy. The Rolex bubble has not burst. We've got Paul Thorpe. Paul Thorpe. He's a good little geezer, that one. He's a good little geezer. Um, I mean, if ever you thought Paul Thorpe was a little bit on the dodgy side, the fact that he had... A link to the Cray Brothers is enough to scare any villain. Hey, I'm the Rancher, and this is the Clive Watch Wrangler channel. And I have a quick announcement to make. I'm not wearing this shirt inside out. This is this is just the way it's made. So don't type. Thanks. But I wanted to do a quick follow-up about the sale by Watchfinder in the UK. And I've had a couple, you know. Someone sent me an email, and in the meanwhile, Paul Thorpe Watch Dealer and Bark and Jack have chimed in. Bark and Jack, I think, was the most catchy of the of the ones, basically saying that the Rolex bubble has burst because you know popular spilt stores still sports models by Watchfinder being discounted, a uh, few models showing up, sports models showing up in eighty windows here and there. And as we've learned, Paul Thorpe does not like Watchfinder. No. So, and actually, Adrian even had a balloon with Rolex written on it in Magic Marker and popped it with a knife, which kind of TGV-ish if you ask me, but we'll, we'll just let him have that one. Okay. Guys, we know that I, among other people, we want we want this insanity to end. We really, really do. I mean, that would be so nice if they could go back. To, if they could go back to the way things were, and you actually could shop carefully for a still sports piece for under MSRP because because it was used. It it used to be that way. I swear to God, it used to be that way. Those days are you know. Even Jake Ehrlich called uh, the way things are now the new normal. But it doesn't mean that the new normal, the normal can change a little bit. It can adjust. Now, here in the flyover states, we've been having some really extreme temperature, temperature variations. I mean, we've got uh, hot weather coming in from so down south, you know, from the, I don't know, equator or something. We've got cold air coming in from Canada, and those two duke it out. So every once in a while cold air wins and we'll be like barely above freezing for a few days. And then the hot air pushes back, pushes the cold air out and it's 70 degrees in like 48 hours. It's like, it's like the entire state has malaria. So what's this have to do with anything? Okay. Well, like our tires here in the, our car tires here in the flyover states, Keep in mind when, um, it, it, kind of a good analogy for what's going on with the market. When things, when demand really, really heats up, prices expand, like our car tires. And they will, they will expand to the point where it'll, it'll do the, you know, the people with newer cars, it'll have the little over, you know, tire pressure warning. However, when the demand slope cools off, Basically, prices constrict. Demand constricts, and uh, just prices follow. 
to where, again, the pressure warning, the tire pressure gauges start going off in her car again, saying, yeah. So, half the week I'm putting air in my tires, the other half I'm taking it out. So, what's it have to do with WatchFinder in, the, in their UK cell? Prices expanded a little bit too much. And it, it kind of makes sense because, you know, prices cannot keep ex- exponentially increasing quarter after quarter without, you know, until the end of time. Obviously, um, it, there are limits to it, especially to a good that's not a necessity. Now, if we're talking water, maybe. But a luxury watch, no. It's not like, because think about it, it if you believed uh, the people that just think the good times will roll when it comes to uh, value uh, inflation, then Archie Luxury, you know, Archie Luxury would be able to go to someone, you know, basically five years from now, go up to someone and say, hey, trade your house for this Explorer 2. Come on, come on, box of papers. There are limits. And right now, I think the watch cell from watch the cell the rock cell from watch finder showed where those limits are so and when i was checking the prices and kind of doing the comparison from british pounds to us dollars the cell prices were what i was familiar with what i'm used to you know like a batman you know batman sells for like uh, roughly 10,000 us resells for like 15 15 and a half the sale was back down to the new or the old insane price. So the WatchFinder cell, basically it's gone from are you freaking kidding me prices to simply back to the old oh my god prices. So right. Are you effing kidding me to oh my god. Keep in mind oh my god is still better than are you freaking kidding me but no, 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 no. They're not giving watches away. So the Rolex bubble has not burst. A little demand may have cooled off a little bit and the prices are coming back down. A little bit, a tiny bit. So how are you gonna know if the bubble bursts or if the balloon is deflated? Well, well, some people are gonna know, they're gonna have advance notice. And people start getting calls like this. Hello? Hey, it's Pam at the AD. You know, we told you that there's going to be a two-year waiting list on that uh, green Submariner you've been wanting so bad. Well, we just got one in the store for you. Come on down and get it. Wait a minute. You told me it was going to be two years. Now, all of a sudden, it's been... It hasn't been... It's been six months. Uh, Yeah, I can't explain it, but there's one waiting for you. Come Come on down and get it. Those people have advance notice. The rest of us will know when the bubble is over or what's deflated or if things are back to sane. When we walk into an, you, we walk into like your town has three ADs and between the three ADs, you can find the pieces that you want for MSRP. Then, then the bubble's over. It's not over now. And, uh, well, let's see, how do I put this? So, Tales of the bubble bursting are premature. And I'm thinking about a speech by Winston Churchill upon the uh, British victory in North Africa in 1942, 1943. He said, this is not the end. This is not the beginning of the end. But it is perhaps the end of the beginning. Anyway, guys, so... I, I... just what I've always been saying. If you have a Rolex that you love, hold on to it. You should do that anyway. If you have a Rolex that you're out of love with, you might want to think about getting out of it sooner rather than later. And if there's an, if there's another piece, sign up to the AD. Don't be a schmuck. Don't pay. Don't pay over MSRP for a piece that Rolex is currently making. I assure you, I assure you, um, you do not need to fund, I don't want to, 
I, some of these guys that sell watches on other channels, I'm not going to name any name, names, but you don't need to fund someone's trip to Dubai or to Hong Kong or going to Casamel for a vacation. They, they, should, they should do it just fine without you. Anyway, let's enjoy your watches. Let's be good to each other. Thanks. He's got you lousy fuckers racing around. All you speculators there. Yeah, you should be worried. You are the nasty cunts who deserve to be fucking booted. That's right, you deserve to be booted. But uh, no, unfortunately the bubble hasn't burst. I, I wish it was the case. I want to I wanna stand here on my soapbox and say, I told you fucking fools. I told you so, but it's... I gotta let that speech sit. Its speech is coming out soon, but uh, yeah, market has not, the Rolex bubble has not burst, but it has deflated a bit. So uh, that's the pontiff's edict, the pontiff's verdict. I'm Paul Pruder. Tell me what you fuckers think. Like, subscribe, tell your fuckhead friends. Don't be afraid to put some nasty negative comments down below. And until next time, ciao, fuckers! David SW. David SW. David SW. Who does Archie Luxury recommend is the greatest grey market dealer in America? There's only one choice. David SW. That's right, guys. I've got to tell you the honest truth. I have, for a long time, been looking for... The perfect answer. Who do I recommend people go to see? Who do I recommend that people can go and uh, buy watches? And I've got to be honest with you. The greatest, the greatest pre-owned dealer for Rolex, Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet is David SW. David SW. David SW. David SW.com. That's right, guys. I have been looking for a contact who I can very nicely refer people to. I am not in the selling business. Customer service. I'm too old to sell watches. I'm too old. I like to recommend my viewers to a reliable source. In Australia, I've got some great sources. There's uh, Sydney Watch Exchange with Cove. Rani at Vintage Watch Co. Shani, Shani at European Watch Gallery. And in America, who is the best source for pre-owned Rolex? For all the hot models? There's only one person I would recommend, David SW. David SW, David SW. That is the premier source for pre-owned Rolex. I gotta be completely frank and honest with you. Guys, if you are looking for a hot Rolex model, there is only one place you can go to. David SW. David SW. David SW. Let's be honest, guys. There's no point schmoozing, schmoozing, schmoozing the dealers, the ADs. They're just a waste of time. Unless you're going to buy 20 pieces, you are wasting your time. What you're better off to do is pay the market premium and go to a good Good pre-owned dealer. Who do I recommend? David SW. David SW. David SW. That's correct, guys. I want to tell you this now. I 100% stand behind David SW. David SW, the greatest pre-owned dealer in the entire United States of America. That's right. The greatest pre-owned dealer for Rolex, for Patek Philippe, for Audemars Piguet, David SW. He even does things like FP Jean. David SW. David SW. David SW. That's right. If you want to buy a pre-owned Rolex, a Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, there's only one Good source, I would recommend David SW, David SW, David SW. I'm Paul Pluter, the method actor who plays Archibald Chesterfield III, and I'm proud to recommend David SW. See you later. Thank you for watching this channel.